of the most frequent requests I get is to look at different magnetic motor and alternative energy devices posted on YouTube and give my opinion of their validity. The reason being that there are so many fake magnetic motor, perpetual motion, and alternative energy devices online that it's often difficult to determine what is real and what isn't. Hopefully this video can serve as a time saver in determining what's real and what's fake but also act as an aid to those that are genuinely trying to document and share their inventions or replications of alternative energy technologies and share the information with others. If you'd like to see this two-part series in one video, visit my Rumble backup channel at the URL above. If you haven't already, visit my other YouTube channel that features interesting topics that wouldn't always fit the subject matter on this one. And for my more controversial videos, visit me at the URL above. I'd like to give credit to James Roney for sharing his own list of validation methods a few years back and giving me the idea to compose my own. This list isn't foolproof, but it's at least a basic guideline of validation methods to start with. Number one, film your video in high definition with sound, so it's easier to show that there are no wires or cheat devices attached to your motor, and no compressed air or wind machines being used to simulate rotation. Number two, Place your motor in a non-carpeted room with adequate space, preferably with at least six feet of open space around each side. Wires can easily be hidden on carpeted floor. To prevent even the suggestion of any cheat devices, make sure there are no wires or objects anywhere near your motor. Number three, make sure the room is well illuminated so that all aspects of your motor can be seen clearly. Number four, make sure your motor is placed on a glass or plexiglass table with a transparent or plexiglass stand if possible. Wooden or metal stands can be used to hide cheat devices. Number five, set up the table inside of the camera and clearly display that there are no wires or cheat devices attached to it. Number six, place your motor on a table and clearly demonstrate that there are no batteries, wires, or cheat devices hidden anywhere in your motor assembly, assembling or disassembling it in front of the camera if possible. Number seven, your entire video needs to be filmed continuously with no cuts. Once you start your motor, the entire motor needs to be visible in every frame. If there are any frames where your motor is not shown in its entirety, start over. Number eight, start your motor while filming. Once you start your motor, your entire motor needs to be completely in view at all times, without the camera panning away. It also needs to run for at least 20 uninterrupted minutes. Number nine, place a candle on the table next to your motor to show that there is no wind or air instrument being used to produce rotation. Number 10, make sure there is a white stripe or sticker somewhere on your rotor that will allow for analysis to be done on your video to determine if the motor is maintaining a constant speed, accelerating, or decelerating. 11, perform a complete walk around your motor while it's rotating. Keep the entire motor in view while demonstrating that there is nothing under the table or above the motor that could be causing it to rotate. After completing at least one complete walk around, keep your camera steadily focused on your motor, approximately six to eight feet away, for the remaining 20 minute duration of demonstrating your motor in rotation. Now, having presented these guidelines, it should be easier to determine what might be a working device, but it should also be easier for you to invalidate most of the fakes. Unfortunately, many of the magnetic motor perpetual motion and alternative energy devices on YouTube are fake. How to invalidate a magnetic motor. It should go without saying that when all the background sound has been completely removed and replaced with music, the obvious reason is to conceal the fact that an air hose is being used to induce rotation of the motor. I can tell you from having worked with V-Gates that they aren't a strong type of motor to begin with. So the idea that the magnets or metal cylinders on the rotor could cause the rotor to spin with enough force to push an exterior arm attached to a magnet away from the rotor and then flip a secondary magnet at the bottom of the rotor is highly unlikely. Again, this video places music over the background noise to cover up an air hose or cheat device. This YouTuber is supposedly using a gravity wheel to turn an electric motor and power a small light bulb. I think it goes without saying that this is a fake. Some people are clever enough to record sound separately and edit the sound into the video to cover up the fact that they used an air hose to make the device appear to work. That is most likely what is going on here because this YouTuber never shows you what is directly above the device 
or what is toward the direction of the camera. The two previous devices are types of gravity wheels. Gravity wheels are supposed to work by distributing the weight on one side of the wheel further from the center than the other side, employing a form of leverage to induce rotation. Magnetic motors make use of the electron spin of multiple types of magnets, shielding techniques, momentum, and various other principles. Allow me to lay out some of the basics on how magnetic motors work, and then I'll show you some examples to clarify. The types of magnetic motors I'm covering in this section are permanent magnet motive force systems. They may be built in linear or rotary systems. These are not electromagnetic motors, and they do not work in the same fashion as electromagnetic motors. The Induction Expulsion Linear Magnetic Motor 1. The magnetic track attracts the magnetic cart into a gate with little or no repulsion at the entrance of the track. Number 2. The magnetic track propels the cart through the length of the track without stopping. 3. The magnetic track expels the cart out of the track without drawing it back in. The Exchange Force Pulse Linear Magnetic Motor 1. When you place the magnetic cart into the opening gate of the track, it is attracted in. Number 2. The magnetic track propels the cart through a series of spin accelerators. 3. The spin accelerators fire an exchange force pulse of 400 to 500 times the normal strength of the magnet into the magnets on the cart as it moves through the track, accelerating its speed as it moves through and shooting it out the end of the track at a high rate of speed. The Imbalance System Linear Magnetic Motor Number 1. When you place the magnetic cart into the opening gate of the track, it is attracted in. Number 2. The system is imbalanced, meaning that the magnets are placed in such a way that the cart won't cog or stall as it moves through the track. Number 3. The cart may or may not experience a repulsive field at the entrance or exit of the track but will move all the way through the track even if you start it in different placements inside the track. With a true exchange force pulse or imbalance system, you can move the cart along the track to certain start points and the cart will move all the way through the track, regardless of the length of the track. In fact, in an exchange force pulse system, the cart will accelerate as it moves through the track and easily exit the track if you place the cart directly in the magnetic field of any of the spin accelerators. The main characteristic of an induction expulsion motor is that it will easily attract into the track and exit it. However, the cart may or may not cog or come to a stop if you place it at random placements within the track. In most magnetic tracks, you'll notice a repulsive force at the entrance of the track. Once you get past that spot, the track will generally eject the cart or object through the track and out the other end. Novices often assume they have something and immediately try arcing the geometry to create a circular motor. But there's really no magic to this. You would get the same effect by simply lining up a small magnet on a cart next to a couple of longer magnets. Before I use this analogy, let me point out that magnets are not comparable to rubber bands or springs. And when you hear people say they are, it demonstrates a lack in their understanding of magnetic fields that usually comes from antiquated, outdated textbook principles. Regardless, for simplicity, this effect is similar to pulling a rubber band and releasing it, or pulling on a spring and releasing it. You get no more force out than what you put into it. If the magnetic arrangement in the track is really working, you should be able to move the cart into multiple placements in the track, and it will still move through the entire track without cogging or stopping. Or it should even accelerate as it moves past certain arrangements of magnets, in which case it should easily exit the track. If you aren't able to detect whether a magnetic track is working properly, just add to its length. Eventually the cart will stall or quit accelerating, unless you have built a working magnetic motor. If your track is too short, almost any magnetic arrangement can appear to be working. Extend the track and you'll quickly discover what is and isn't. Those are just some basic principles to apply that will save you a lot of time in determining what works and what doesn't. Thanks for watching and do great things.